Hello, my name is Mark Anderson. I'm an applications engineer with Saratech. Today we're going to be doing a demonstration on adaptive milling, a new cycle with NXCAM. So as always, our customer enablement series starts at 11 p.m. Pacific time. They're around 30 minutes long, led by subject matter experts, developers, or power users. And they're specialized into different categories, FEMAP, Solid Edge, NX, Team Center, and all the different products that are offered. What we're trying to do is help you to get the most out of the software that you've purchased, to share our knowledge and to build a community that you can reach out to when you have questions. Okay, for today on our agenda, we're gonna discuss the new adaptive milling operation. We're gonna show the new cutting parameters page and the non-cutting moves page. We're gonna compare the new cav adaptive milling cycle to the, the old cavity milling cycle that's always been there. We're gonna highlight the main differences and efficiencies between the two. And the new adaptive milling operation, it's available as a new uh, operation type in the mill contour template dropdown. And it's available with all bundles that include cavity milling operation in it. So it'd be your three axis milling packages. So the adaptive milling, the new operation template, uh, these videos, I will send a link to where they will, will be able to be viewed if they seem a little choppy. The capabilities of the new adaptive milling operation template, the, the safe default values, what it's done is it's been built on the cavity milling template and it was decided to create the new template because it varied, the parameters varied so much from cavity milling. The adaptive milling template provide the user with secure default values. So you can run this without changing those default values and it'll be in the safety zone. And to be highlighted are the depth of cut with two times the step over and with 7% of the tool diameter. So it's going based off of chip load more than feed rate and spindle speed. The capabilities again are the adaptive milling. It main maintains a consistent chip thickness by varying the step over and maintaining a high feed rate. And you can see in the video, it's doing a, a circle milling out, clearing material until it gets to a, a position, then it's going to go over. Now it's doing what they call a D slot tricordal. Each one of those moves that stays, the tool stays in the material. <clears throat> so when it repositions, it's a fast reposition move. And what that does is it gives you a much smoother and cleaner uh, machine tool motion. There's not a bunch of uh, jagged and rough rapid motions. And then it'll always follow a certain path, circle milling out to a clearance diameter, D-slot tricordal to, to shape, and then it will go to standard climb milling to finish. And you also get high feed rates that are possible through the consistent chip thickness and the cutting tool can be used to their maximum. So what happens generally in conventional milling is you get you use half the diameter of the tool depth of cut, but full width of the, or 90% of the cutter. And what that does is it burns up the, just a small portion of your tool that has to be reground before you can use it again. And many shops don't even go that far. They just put them in the recycle and scrap them out after that first portion of the end mill is gone. Now you'll be able to utilize a lot more of that end mill up front. You can see it it's going, in this video, it's going to go down to a certain depth that's all the flute length that it, it has. And on the machine tool, you would think that would be a heavy load, but it's in all reality, it's a, it's a very light load. And it's going off of a, a volume of material removal instead of a feed rate and a spindle speed. It increases the tool life, it reduces the tool cost, and again, it allows you to utilize the full flute length of the cutting tools. Now, in the adaptive milling, the, one of the patterns is called a morphed spiral. The morphed spiral, it's utilized on outside boundaries and facing regions. It reduces non-cutting moves. It gives you a consistent cutting motion and reduces the machining time. And that's why you see other softwares out there that specialize strictly in roughing, like iMachining or Volume Mill. And that's what Siemens and NX has done is they've put together a cycle 
that it has the same types of parameters and toolpath generation that those softwares use, the high volume material removal. And you can see they did this on the, on the top surface so they could show you what this type of toolpath would do with a shallow depth of cut with a uh, large radial engagement. So you can use this either direction. It shortens your non-cutting moves. It reduces the machine time. It gives you much smoother transitions. And you have now a selectable height for the low height transfers. So if the tool does need to, if you have a three-dimensional surface like that, if the tool does need to create a non-cutting move to skip over top of a piece, you can select a height for that particular particular move. So it's not rapiding. You can go 100 thousandths above all material instead of to a safety plane. And you can adjust the distance from where the low height transfers are used. So when you're in a part, you could say anything that's more than an inch and a half deep has to do a full height transfer. And I'll show you that in the non-cutting moves page. So let's do a demonstration of NX. So yeah, I have this part here. And what I'm going to show you is the different tool paths and what they are. First, we're going to do the cavity milling so that I can show you just a, what the, the general cavity milling operation does. And I have this at follow part. My step over is 50% of the tool and my depth of cut is 45 millimeter, which is a percentage of my, my diameter. So when I generate this, I'm sorry, I need to specify a tool. There we go. So you see our, our standard toolpath, I'll show you just one level so you can see. And, we'll, and what it does is it's showing, it's doing an offset pattern. And all it does is it grabs a piece of geometry and then it does an offset style pattern all the way out. So when you get into these crunch points here, your chip load is going to vary in all these uh, very quick transitions. So with this type of toolpath, this is a standard toolpath you're going to get a lot of, of inaccuracies in chip load. So if you go too fast, you're definitely going to break your tool here. Now, if we let this play out, I'll slow this down so you can see that the pattern is just offset from one another, just offsetting the pattern. But all of those transition points, you're going to have an extreme jump in, in tool path or in, in um, chip load. So now if I take this and I make it the adaptive milling cycle, and generate this, we'll see an immediate difference in this toolpath. It's going to do those three, three types of toolpaths in one operation instead of just an offset. It's going to do a, a circular clearance, which is the morph spiral. Then it's going to do a D-slot tricordial and then it will do the offset style to clean up the wall. Now it takes a little longer to generate the, the adaptive toolpath just because there's so much more information going in there. There's so much more logic that's being used up so that it can create that toolpath. So now if I verify this toolpath, we'll do the same thing with the current level. You can see I've done exactly that. I came in this center section here is just a cleanup, but then it goes to the D-slot tricordial, and you see we have very few non-cutting moves in comparison to the standard cavity milling operation. Now if I let this play, you can see I came in at a totally different direction, and I just cleared my end mill, and now I did a D-slot tricordial, D-slot tricordial, and we're always climb milling now. And in, in cavity milling, if you had islands and bosses, and you picked climb milling, you are going to be climb, climb cutting on your uh, 
OD walls and conventional milling on your boss walls. So now we've controlled that to where it's consistently always doing a climb mill. And you'll see that it spirals in to give you a clearance when it can't make its own clearance. And th these toolpaths are very, very indicative of what iMachining will give you. And our parameters allow you to control it as well, if not better than the uh, add-on softwares. And it'll be before long, you won't, you won't even have to even contemplate those additional softwares. The adaptive uh, roughing cycle is, is going to take over for that. So now let's show you the non-cutting pages. So just for to show a comparison, we're three minutes, what is that, a little under three minutes better in time between the cycles. So let's go into adaptive. You're going to see that it's the same exact style. Everything is identical. You just have different types of options and different parameters in here. And you can go 200% your diameter in depth. And you could only go to 150 in, in cavity milling. So everything is exactly the same. We'll go into cutting parameters first. Same thing in your strategy, same thing in your stock, same thing. Your uh, cutting parameters page is going to remain almost identical. Your non-cutting move page, however, is going to change. So you have your engage retract avoidance, but in your transfers, we now have these additional options here within regions, the low height transfer and how, how to clear that. And we can display my clearance. So we now have these additional options in here. So now when we go into our, that yeah, was in the connect, uh, connections tab, we can tell it alternate directions as well. But these are standard options in there. So the main differences is, uh, are going to be your parameters here, your three parameters here and then your non-cutting moves, your low height transfers. And you can see that it's going to be, it's a very, very efficient cycle. And what it was meant to do is it was meant to take those Haas machines, those sheet metal machines, and be able to give them the ability to compete with those really rugged, very um, high horsepower machines that can, could handle conventional style cutting and get these parts done quick. But they've, studies have shown that the high volume removal softwares like iMachining or Volumill and now our adaptive roughing cycle, it's going to uh, take away the need for those additional cycles and it's going to make it to where all in one bundle, one, one system, you can get the efficiencies that you couldn't get with the high horsepower machines running conventional styles. Even on off of the sheet metal machines, if you had a, a Matsura 5 axis, mm -hmm. you, you could run these types of uh, tool paths and still be more efficient than the uh, conventional machining where you're using very low depth of cut and uh, radi high radial engagements. And you'll find, and that's what Siemens is, is betting on, that once you get used to the the, the function of the adaptive rough, roughing cycle, it's going to really push the cavity milling to the back burner, the operation, just because there's different nuances with the cavity milling operation and everybody knows about them. Uh, sometimes it just gives you a little bit of a weird tool path in a certain area and you can't explain why. And it's just because they've used a cycle for 11 generations of, of software that you get to a certain point to where logic starts running into itself and you start getting anomalies that can't be fixed. So they created this new cycle that's very competitive to the add-on cycles, our softwares, uh, to compete with their roughing cycles. But I do, I do believe that once you uh, start using it and see the simplicity of it, you're, you're going to like the toolpath, you're going to like the way it runs on your machine, and you'll pretty much push cavity milling off to the back burner. I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere around version 13 or 14 cavity milling is taken and taken off the table. So with that, 
let's get back to my PowerPoint. So in summary, this operation gives you a high volume roughing. It maintains a high feed rate through consistent chip thickness. It uses the full flute length of the tool or as much as possible. If you have a tool that's eight times diameter on the flute length, you're not going to be able to use the full flute length, but you are going to be able to uh, use a great deal of that. Uh, the tool path achieved with adaptive milling is more indicative of eye machining and volume mill style tool path patterns, and, and thus you'll get the same types of efficiencies. You have a much higher productivity, a longer tool life, and it's a good choice for hard milling. And what, what this does with the extra options, the extra parameters in uh, the cycle, if you are machining, say, 62 Rockwell D2 um, with some pretty specific end mills, those end mills have very, very specific parameters which they're, they need to be ran in, a very specific axial depth of cut, a very specific radial depth of cut. And in the way that they give you those numbers on the end mill itself, you can plug them right into the box, 7% of the end mill or 3% of the end mill with five times diameter depth of cut. It works very good for doing uh, the spiral types of patterns in hard machining. So our next session is going to be what's new in ST10. That'll be September 21st at 11 a.m. with uh, Kelsey Safar. You know, if you're ready to take it to the next level, we do hands-on training classes for software users of all levels. We also do specific training, uh, hand tailored training, whichever training you would specifically like. We can hand tailor them to your needs. And we also do contract engineering services that address to your demand for advanced engineering capabilities, design all the way through to programming for manufacturing. With that, I thank you for attending. And if the, the videos are choppy, you will see a follow-up link to those videos so that you can see the, the end mills in action and what the adaptive roughing cycle can do in real life. Thank you.